want to spend a couple of minutes talking about IQ scores, particularly about continuity and how they predict outcomes for students. So if we start off looking at continuity of I scores, IQ scores, then uh, we find out that there are longitudinal studies that have measured the same children's IQ scores at different ages. And those studies have shown impressive continuity from ages five and onwards. Now, measurements conducted closer in time are more closely correlated. If you've got for a given length of time between the tests, the scores are more stable at older ages. So what that means is that um, the scores between ages six and seven, for example, are less strongly correlated than the scores between ages eight and nine. Changes in IQ scores over time may be influenced by the characteristics of the children and their parents, particularly uh, parental views about academic performance. So the more parents are interested in academic performance, uh, the more the IQ scores increase over time. Unsurprisingly, changes in environment can contribute to changes in IQ scores, things like divorce or uh, moving to a different neighbourhood and therefore attending a different school, can we can see some changes around that. And of course, there are going to be random variations. And one of the obvious ones there is how alert um, the children or young people are when they're doing those t that testing. If they've had a terrible night at home and they've had no sleep and they're, they're desperately hungry, uh, they're not going to test well. Whereas if they've had a good night's sleep and a good breakfast and no stress on the way to school, then they're in a better position to be tested. Now, in terms of IQ scores predicting outcomes, IQ is a strong predictor of academic, economic and occupational success. That means is that um, IQ scores are more closely related to later occupational success than is socioeconomic status or the school somebody attended or any other variable that has been studied. There are other influences on outcomes and here I would link you very much to the lecture from Elise on Bronfenbrenner. Things like motivation, creativity, health, social skills and other factors are important influences on success. If we look at self-discipline, which is the ability to inhibit actions, and the ability to follow the rules and to avoid impulsive reactions, Self-discipline can predict uh, year eight grades, even after the influence of IQ is taken into account. If we look at practical intelligence, which are abilities that are not measured on IQ tests, things like how accurately somebody can read somebody else's emotions or their intentions or the capacity to motivate other people to work effectively as members of a team, this also predicts occupational success, even after the influence of IQ has been taken into account. So IQ influences income, so, but so do other factors like education. And the relations are evident in, in data collected back in the 1980s, which indicate that the average income of people who received different levels of education and who scored in different quintiles of the IQ distribution. Without any given level of education, people of higher IQ earned more. Thus, among people with only a high school education, those who scored in the bottom 20% of the IQ test averaged only a little more than $250 a week. But 
for people in the top 20%, average almost $450 a week. But people in the top 20% in IQ score who only have a high school education only earn $450 a week. But people with the same IQ with a degree earn $650 a week. 